let's get a little sentimental here, okay? Back in 2012, Hayden Winks couldn't even go see an R-rated movie, but Josh Norris was watching prospects who weren't even invited to the Senior Bowl. And one of my best early calls, Malik Jackson, coming out of Tennessee. I believe he went on to go as like a fourth or fifth round pick. But I just remember watching him at Tennessee, a USC transfer, and just loving what I watched and not understanding. I had no background to, to base it on. I was like, there's something there. And what has Malik Jackson gone on to do? Become an outstanding player who got paid a boatload of money by the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Philadelphia Eagles. I am certain there's another Malik Jackson in this class, and his name is Milton Williams coming out of Louisiana Tech. And look, he might not be Josh Chapman in the run game to have another call back here, <laughs> but he doesn't get obliterated in the running game either. He, he has an anchor there, but what he does bring is unusual movement as a pass rusher. Um, he can bend at the ankles, at the knees, and work around these heavy-footed, stiff offensive guards and creates these angles that a lot of other interior pass rushers do not get. And talking about straight points A to B, well, that goes straight to my heart when interior defensive linemen can do that. And Milton Williams is someone who I'm going to have as a top 20, top 25 prospect in this class because he's my type and he fits all my biases. I mean, 99th percentile adjusted spark athleticism, Josh. I mean, Doesn't hurt. Doesn't doesn't get much better than that. 38.5 inch vert at 284 pounds. I mean, that is insane. And like we were talking about um, earlier, 74th percentile tackles for loss among defensive tackles as well. And that's what really translates. That's meaning you're winning on early downs against the run. You're also explosive enough to get upfield uh, against the pass too. So I can see it. Uh, he's, I don't think he's, I'm, I don't think I've ever seen him in a round one mock draft before, but there's definitely a ceiling to chase here. Long, sudden, explosive. That's a dangerous trio right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he, he attacks the shoulders. He attacks the edges. He, he attacks the angles of all these guys. Any concern, Ben, or are we past this? We're at, oh, he's at 284 pounds. What do we do with him? I just feel like what you do with him is you allow him to, to create disruption, and that ultimately ends in production. Well, in the fall, that was one of the biggest questions around him because he really played this past season at about 260 oh. and really Ooh. had to wear some tough hats for his team playing on the inside as they had a couple opt-outs and the roster got kind of decimated. And then he had to figure out, do you want to lose weight and be an edge or gain weight and be a through-and-through three-tech? And he put on 10, 15 pounds of good weight in the offseason. Everybody said, we know what you want to be, and you're going to be a three-tech at the next level. But having those hybrid guys or – you could call them a tweener, too. If they're a hybrid, I like them. If they're a tweener, I don't like them. That's why I usually uh, categorize them as. But it's always important to know what they were played at and what they were asked to do because there were some plays where he played three-tech and he looked a little light where he got blasted off the ball against double teams. So there's always a little bit of context to fill in there. But yeah. sitting at 285 and he tested like that, Hayden, at 285 – just yeah. checking all the boxes, in my opinion. And I, I think that experience is great for him. Like, I saw other double teams where he held ground and allowed other people to make plays, too. So, it, I mean, I'm all in, as you can tell. I'm absolutely all in.